Hello everyone, my name is Topartain and I welcome you all in the Essence of Geology and Open Platform. Today I will discuss with you an interesting topic that is normal fault. Before I would go to the normal fault, first I like to discuss with you what is structural geology. Structural geology is the most commonly defined as the study of the architecture of the earth crust. It has developed due to the deformation of from its time of formation. Structural geology addresses the form, symmetry, geometry, and certainly the alignment and artistic rendering of the component of the earth's crust on scale. Structural geology is the study of the architecture of rocks insofar as it has resulted from deformation. Tectonics and tectonic geology are terms that may consider to be synonyms with structural geology. To some, however, structural geology is concerned primarily with the geometry of the rocks, whereas tectonics deals with the forces and movement that produce the structure. Falls, folds, fracture, etc. are some of the structures formed due to tectonic causes and they are part of a structural geology. Now fault. Fault is a surface or narrow zone along which one side is moved relative to the other in a direction parallel to the surface or zone. The essential feature is the differential moment parallel to the surface of the fracture. Some faults are only a few inches long and the total displacement is measured in fraction of an inch. At the other extreme, there are faults that are hundreds of miles long with a displacement measured in miles and even tens of miles. This planar discontinuity originates by tectonic forces acting regionally. The force may be tensional or compressional. Fault is a surface or narrow zone along which one side is more relative to the other in a direction parallel to the surface or zone. Now classification of fault. There are two main types of classification of fault. That is geometric fault and genetic fault. On the basis of the net slip for geometric fault are divided into three types that is strike slip fault, deep slip fault and diagonal slip fault. In strike slip fault where the net slip is essentially horizontal along the strike of the fault and in deep slip from which is clearly from the diagram that is a fault in which moment is essentially downward along the deep of fault is called deep slip fault. And diagonal fault is a fault in which the direction of moment is diagonal to both the deep and strike of the fault is called oblique fault or a diagonal slip fault. On the basis of the deep angle they are divided into two types that is the high angle fault or low angle fault. In high angle fault the deep is greater than 45 degree and in low angle fault the deep is less than 45 degree. On, on the basis of apparent moment, they are classified into normal fault, reverse fault, thrust fault, strike slip fault, etc. A normal fault is the one in which the hanging one appears to move down or relative to the foot wall. And a reverse fault is the one in which the hanging wall appears to have moved down or relative to the foot wall. In this case, the fault plane dips towards the up throw side. Now I would like to discuss the main topic that is the normal fault. A normal fault is the one in which the hanging wall appears to move downward relative to the foot wall. In this case the fault plane dips towards the down throw side. Generally they embrace younger on the rocks on the top of the older rocks. This is the picture of the normal fault clearly shows that the hanging wall appears to move down or relative to the foot wall and this is the picture of the normal fault in sandstone that is in Utah, USA. Some of, some of the characteristics of normal fault are that is they are inclined deep slick fault embraces younger rocks below the older rocks most normal faults have a dips of above 60 degree. It exists at levels in the crust. They have lower dip and some approach horizontal. Now come to the structural association of fault. The first structural association of fault is detachment fault. Detachment fault is the low angle fault that makes the major boundary between unfaulted rocks below and hanging wall above. 
now the second one is imbricate fall these are closely spaced parallel falls of same type they either terminate against or merge with a detachment fall normal fall in the hanging one block may form a set of imbricate fault now synthetic and antithetic fault normal fault generally present in a system of many associated fault in such system there are two groups where some has major displacement and some has minor displacement in small scale faults are parallel to the major fault and have the same sense of fear than the system is synthetic fault on the other hand if the small scale fault are the conjugate or orientation that is have comparable deep angle but opposite deep direction and opposite sense of shear then the system is called antithetic this picture clear, clearly shows that the synthetic and antithetic fault now the horst and graben structure a graben is the down drop block bounded on both sides by conjugate normal fault the term graben is derived from the german on grab meaning ditch tensional crustal forces which push the crust apart are responsible for the formation of graben structure a half graben is a down drop block bounded on only one side by major normal fault a horst is a relatively uplifted block bounded by two conjugate normal fault together an alternating uplifted and down drop fall block are called a horst and graben structure causes and mechanics of faulting it is generally assumed that the fault develops when the shear stress acting along the plane is large enough to overcome the cohesive strength as well as fr frictional resistance to more along the fracture plane Faulting is recognized to be the most efficient way in which strain build up in rocks is released. Because of friction and rigidity of rocks, they cannot glide or flow past each other easily, and occasionally all movement stops. When this happens, stress build up in the rocks, and then it is reaches to a level that exceeds the strain threshold. The accumulated potential energy is displaced by the release of strain which is focused into a plane along which relative motion is accumulated that is the fall. In this picture this clearly shows that in the first ruptures expand circularly on the fall plane sending out seismic waves in all directions that is the focus and in second stage what happens the rupture is continuous and, and expands and the rupture front progresses down the fall plane re reducing the stress in in the last stage what happened the two blocks are separated separated each other and the phenomenon occurs that is the fault faulting now come to the anderson theory of faulting british geology e m anderson proposes a theory which explains the din dynamics of a large number of fall in a shallow crust that provides a useful theoretical explanation for a three fall classification that is normal stress and slight slip fall this explanation is called anderson theory of faulting fault results from a brittle fracture and to apply the columns criteria onto this problem this led him to expect that the fall should some times form conjugate sheds which planes incline at acute angles on the other side of the maximum principal stress and which include the intermediate principal stress direction. By applying the conditions that near the free surface one of the principal stress is vertical. Anderson showed that the three major classes of fault results from the three principal classes of inequality that may exist between the principal stresses. The theory though only released the orientation of fault to the stress field that existed at the time of formation and it is usually not possible to prove the simultaneously of the origin of the old fault is discussed. These three types of fault are recognized depending on why, whether the tensile stress that is sigma 1, the compressive stress axis sigma 3 and or the intermediate stress axis sigma 2 is vertical. Now, the normal fall occurs when sigma 2 and sigma 3 are horizontal with sigma 1 vertical and the dip of the normal fall should be above 60 degree. 
now come to the conclusion geologists study fault with to better understand where large earthquake originates knowing the location of active faults is important so that planar houses and other structure which would be destroyed when the fall breaks the earth surface faults may be studied carefully by oil mineral exploration geologists because faulting controls the distribution of valuable minerals Fault plays an important role in groundwater mobility and the general availability of water. Regional fault analysis is required for the localization and building of large human-made structures such as dams and nuclear power plants. Such structures should clearly not be built near potentially active fluids. Thank you.